What's up? It's Keith. I'm in a fall cleanup right now. It's a foggy day. Uh, working in this video, I want to talk about uh, some things I'm becoming awake to. There you go. Some things I'm becoming awake to and aware of, and I want to share with you. You know, I'll be out working and stuff, and I'll be like, "Oh my God, I've got it! Oh my God, I figured it out!" And then I don't pick up the you know the camera and shoot a video and share it with you. So I'm gonna start sharing the stuff with you. My face is freezing. So. I think about, I can't get over the fact that how I was able to leave my job in six weeks completely and have my business off the ground. It was very hard. I was running like my hair was on fire, but I really, really did it. And I look back, I didn't start my business till I was 27, yet I've been landscaping and in this industry since I was, well, I've been cutting grass since I was like 12 with my dad had a little lawn care company way back in the day. And then uh, I left work for him and went to work for a company and just on and on and on. But anyways, so all those years of misery, I mean, I hated working for another man. I hated work for other people. I hated getting out of the truck and having to rush back to the trailer to rip the equipment down and start working. I hated the thought of possibly breaking someone else's equipment and having to pay for it. And just that anxiety of working for someone else is absolute hell to me so here's the thing all those years I, I can literally go back in my mind can you go back in your mind of all the years of hard work and think about the really really bad days you had at work I'm talking the days where you wanted to just like drive the mower down into a ditch or take the weed whip and just throw it and be like I quit I'm gonna go just live in the woods like when you're so frustrated and you can't take it anymore that you feel like you're sick and tired of being sick and tired dude I'm telling you like I've been so negative and so down at times in my life where I, I've said I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired to where you literally go into depression you feel like there's no hope and then the winter comes and maybe you get an unemployment check or you push some snow or something uh, being broke is the most painful thing in the world because you know I, I'm not gonna get into the monetary system and all the stuff we you know but it, it really if you're not a real strong-minded man and you don't know your purpose being broke can really mess with your self-esteem it can mess with who you believe you are you could forget who you really are and you feel like you're just a slave who just works for money to pay bills when you're when your checks are already spent for two months in advance you know what i'm saying obviously i like talking to the new guys because that's my mission is to help people see uh what i was able to see too damn late if i can help you see it earlier and faster then that's what i want to do so here, here's an idea i like to here this just this a uh, customer shed look at all these lines we'll call this like you know, 2015, 2014, 2013, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We'll just say that. Any time back in the history of me landscaping, if I could go, you say, I could only go back with what I know now. If you could just like quantum leap and appear in your old self when you were younger, you would go. <laughs> you know, you'd be like, wow six weeks to leave my job and start my own business one two three four five all these years i could go back to any of these years from 2015 to 2003 and beyond and and just boop, six weeks out of a year i would have been free and in my own business and had all this time to grow my own business any time to just wake up so i'd like to suggest that uh, it all comes down to what Napoleon Hill says in Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't read that or listened to an audiobook, it's really awesome. It's kind of kind of weird to listen to because the way he talks, like old school talking, like if a man has has the desire in thy heart, or, no, not like that. It's weird. He um says you got to have a white hot burning desire. Okay, now that's more than words. A white hot burning desire, a desire that just eats at you every day or ignites you that is really the key to everything is the desire to get there and then the second thing is the fear is paralyzing because it's like there's a com there's like 
a combination to a lock to get through a door to get to where you want to go. And it's written on a piece of paper on a ledge. And you're like scrambling your brains in fear, afraid. It's not going to work. What if I try and I lose everything? What if? So we cling to the security of this job, but it's not, I mean, you're better off dying. But I got a family to feed, but I got this, but I get this. Well, guess what? It's not, like, you have to take a leap because, you know, no ship is safe sitting in the harbor. You've got to go out and sail. sail. Uh, all flowers must bloom or roses must bloom or they die. Like, if you don't bloom and go through the pain of blooming and go through the pain of uh, evolving, you're going to die. So that's what it is like to be in this life and this body and whatever this is, is you have to evolve forward and you can't resist that. Because when you resist evolution, uh, you suffer greatly. So it's like all you got to do is just get the combination and open the lock and walk through the door. And I realized that 99% of people, or 90% of people, aren't willing to do that. They're, they wanna stay and stew in their pity, and their suffering, and their excuses, and their crying, and their complaining, because there's a part of the ego that actually believes, my food is freezing. There's a part of the ego that actually, oh, that doesn't help him stand in front of a bunch of garbage preaching you. It's not garbage, it's just like some pots and stuff. And, I shouldn't have said that in front of my customer's house. <laughs> it's just some pots from, uh, they have flowers planted. So there's a part of the ego that believes, that actually believes it's like a, like the dark side of you. If I complain and cry about this and I suffer through this, then it'll make it better. And I think it's the child inside that was conditioned. If I cry out, yeah, then mama, or something will come and change my daddy will come and make me make it better but mama is gone the ship is gone and you're all by yourself swimming around in the fucking sea and you're gonna die if you don't and so I think that's where the point where you kind of grow and evolve consciously into a full-blown man versus a boy who is crying out all the time or crying even in your thoughts or thinking negative thoughts or self-destructive thoughts into, oh wow, I take full responsibility for everything. And uh, that's that warrior mentality, that consciousness I was talking about in some of my other videos where you finally realize, oh my God, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. So that's really, um, see, there it is. That's what it comes down to. There's a thought world. I talk about this with Coach Rob. You know, sometimes I'll call him up. I have all these thoughts going on and they're conflicting. Inner conflict is horrible. You're like ripped apart sitting on the fence about something or just in your thoughts, you're going crazy. And he's like, dude, it's just a thought world. It's all thoughts. All it is is thoughts. Wipe all those thoughts away and be right here right now all that matters right now is this present moment right now what are you going to do right now not next year not in three months not next week right now when you capture this moment right now you are infinitely powerful you know what i'm saying all right i'm gonna get back to this fall cleanup yo forest over there it's getting over being sick So, fired up, man. All right, peace.